I'm at Lake Atitlan in Guatemala and it's time for another world premiere. This is Swarovski Optics AX Visio, world's first smart binoculars. These are essentially high quality 10 by 32 binoculars with a whole lot of gadgets and features built in of which the 13 megapixel digital camera and the bird ID function are of most interest for bird watchers. I've seen this thing opened up and was able to talk to the developers about it and it's really incredible how much technology fits into this. There is a GPS module, there are all kinds of sensors, a compass, basically a whole smartphone um, and it's still shock and waterproof. If you're watching with the AX Visio, you're looking through binoculars, you're not looking onto a screen like on a mirrorless camera, but there are visual aids mirrored in. So there are um, symbols that tell you, for example, the status of the GPS module or whether the autofocus has worked or not, and also the name of the bird. When you identify a bird with it, you see the name of the bird displayed in the binoculars. The AX Visio is a chunky version of EL 10x32 binoculars if you want. It has only three buttons on the upper side and a wheel to select modes in front of the focusing wheel. The camera lens is located between the two binocular tubes and most of the electronics are housed on the underside of the device, hence the egg shape of the tubes. On the select wheel next to the plane photo mode, there's the bird ID mode. It allows you to take photos and if there's a bird in it, the built-in bird ID app that's powered by the Merlin app will identify it for you, based on the photo and your location. It works very well with larger birds and clear images. When the bird is too small though, hidden in the vegetation or out of focus, you probably won't get a positive ID. But you can still watch the features the old school way and might work on the ID later from a record shirt you took. The shutter button is located on the right side of the device, next to the power on and the only other button. If you're used to focusing with the right hand, you either need to get used to have another task for the same fingers, or you consider focusing with your left hand to have the right one free to take photos. The AX Visio has a 3000 mAh rechargeable battery in one of the tubes. It's charged in an external charger. Let's have a look at the apps. The home of the AX Visio on your phone is the Swarovski Optic Outdoor app. Here you find some status information of the device and also a live view function to show others what you see with the binoculars. There is a gallery of your videos and photos and you can install other apps for mammal ID, for the compass and so on. In the settings you can change some basic things like the brightness of the display that you see when you look through the AX Visio. Um, there's also the auto connect and you get some basic camera features like exposure compensation but that's not very helpful because you would need that in the device there's unfortunately no way to change exposure um, while you're taking pictures only here on the phone in the new version of the merlin app that has been published with the ax visio you can now access the device down here um, tells me I have five new pictures that I haven't downloaded or imported yet from the device. I go to the ones that I have already imported and here if you are familiar with the DG um, that looks quite similar so I get the pictures of today it tells me the best match so the suggested identification which I should carefully check now so here that's a boat built flycatcher well done that's correct uh, from this morning and uh, here would be a picture where it has no ID for 
and what you can do now is you can reframe you can zoom into the picture and see if it gets an ID then or a better ID maybe if you're not happy with the identification um, but there seems to be a bug in this uh, test version that I'm using here and I'm pretty sure that should be fixed uh, soon after this video appears um, this warbler could not be identified so I'm trying to zoom in um, it's a McGillivray's warbler if I pronounce that correctly so I'm zooming in and now there is kind of a live identification after I leave it uh, I get a new ID Nashville warbler close enough not correct unfortunately you see the yellow throat here and breast and the all dark hood of this warbler I think in the next one the problem becomes more clear uh, that this version of Merlin has is that it forgets the GPS location of the image as soon as I reframe so here you see what I mentioned before unfortunately can't change the exposure uh, in the device so in a situation like this with a bright background you will always get underexposed images and still Merlin got the ID right because here Nashville Warbler is correct this is actually a Nashville Warbler um, and now you see what happened I reframed this thing and it forgets the GPS location and it just suggests an ID based on the image and now that's brown-headed honey eater a bird that does not occur in this part of the world I'm pretty sure this is an easy fix um, in the nearest future and nothing to worry about indigo bunting surprisingly well done here's the tiny little bunting with a little bit of blue here's another impressive one that's a, a rufous capped warbler correct identification even though the bird is very small in the middle there um, very well and um, there's an image from the same series here uh, that says western tanager so here you see be careful check the IDs uh, they're a suggestion but you're the bird watcher let's have another look rusty sparrow uh, I'll just show you this because the pictures are so nice correct identification I reframe that picture is so clear uh, it gets it right even though it probably just forgot the GPS location rusty sparrow also from this morning all right so who is this for if you've been using the DG, Swarovski Optics, first step into smarter technologies, then this is definitely a big leap forward. Um, these are full-fledged, high-quality binoculars. Everything's built in, everything is uh, faster, the connection to the phone is more stable. If you're new to bird watching, or if you're going to a place with birds you're unfamiliar with, this might be a good choice. Getting the identifications displayed in the viewfinder is really convenient and saves you a lot of time. If you're an experienced bird watcher struggling only with the most difficult IDs, then sticking to traditional um, binoculars and a mirrorless camera and the long telephoto lens is the better choice, I believe. If you consider getting a pair of these, um, you should be open to using pioneering new technologies. Um, it takes some practice to make the best use of this and also understanding for the limitations of the technology behind it. It's definitely an exciting uh, step into the future of smart birdwatching devices. I hope this review helped you a little bit getting to know this. See you.